the final guest speaker uh, for partnerships in 2011, um, after his brief cameo appearance earlier on at our conference, uh, is the Federal Minister for Infrastructure, Anthony Albanese. Um, and we are uh, delighted to be able to uh, hear from him in a moment. It's my pleasure to introduce the Minister. Uh, IPA is, has been working uh, with Anthony uh, well back into the period when uh, he was in opposition and working through a range of ideas uh, that, that he had uh, for upping the role of the then Transport Department, um, expanding uh, the financial support for infrastructure projects and then the promises that he made of creating a body that went on to be Infrastructure Australia and to injecting funds in the Building Australia Fund. Um, it was a period of change and uh, from our point of view it was a period that was long overdue in terms of the national government asserting itself. Um, it's a, a significant and enduring reform and any minister would want to be associated with that type of outcome but it took a great deal of drive to deliver it. Uh, it's my pleasure to call on Anthony Albanese. Well, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Mark, for uh, the, uh, once again, generous introduction. I truly do value the relationship between uh, myself as the Infrastructure Minister and uh, the uh, Infrastructure Partnerships Australia. Uh, the fact of the relationship is, is so good, you get to hear from me not once but twice uh, in a day, which wasn't really intended. Uh, in terms of at the beginning, but IPA once again were uh, very flexible in terms of uh, in terms of the agenda. As I explained earlier on today, the uh, the modern media kind of like announcements being a bit earlier than uh, this time in the afternoon. So we we rolled out the high speed rail announcement uh, earlier this morning. Uh, for those of you who weren't here. Um, we, uh, I have very consciously uh, made major announcements uh, at Infrastructure Partnerships Australia, uh, just about uh, without exception, certainly it is without exception in terms of conferences. The only ones that haven't been done at IPA events have been done in the Blue Room. And I do that out of uh, consistency to signal the importance that I place on our relationship with the different levels of government but also very much with the private sector. That's at the heart of what I'm about as the Infrastructure Minister. How do we, as, uh, as a society, go forward in dealing with nation building and dealing with the infrastructure deficit? So uh, we do that in, in partnership, not just government alone. Government alone won't be able to do it. So I'm very pleased uh, to be here today, which is uh, your sixth uh, national gathering and uh, it provides, uh, of course, a vital forum for Australia's most senior policy makers, regulators and business leaders. I thank you for the invitation to talk to you this afternoon in more broad terms about the challenges that face us in the infrastructure sector. The IPA has been at the forefront of driving this conversation and it's appropriate that the next step take place right here. We do face significant challenges in tackling the infrastructure backlog in Australia. It's clear we need the private sector to step up and partner with governments when it comes to delivering the infrastructure that this country needs. Australia's been a world leader when it comes to the development of public-private partnerships. There have been issues. Uh, some PPPs have had problems with patronage forecasting and cumbersome ten, uh, tendering processes. I'm not suggesting that government should uh, assume all risk in order to attract private sector investment. Uh, to do that would undermine the very purpose and concept of PPPs. But a degree of risk transfer can provide uh, value and protection for the Australian taxpayer. Procurement processes, for example, can be further improved to reduce the upfront bidding costs for investors. And it is important that projects are viewed on a case-by-case -case basis with flexibility around how risks are managed for specific projects. The government doesn't bring an ideological presumption to the best finance model. It must be based upon what is best value for money. Likewise, we're not undertaking to intervene in state PPPs. Instead, we'll want to work cooperatively with states and territories to develop 
a more nationally sophisticated approach that promotes private investment while delivering value to taxpayers. Ultimately, we want to avoid a situation where investor losses see taxpayers pay a higher price for critical infrastructure in the longer term. In short, we want to get the planning of projects right. In the 2011 budget, the government announced a new infrastructure investment incentive designed to attract up to $25 billion of superannuation and private investment in a nationally significant infrastructure. When some of you looked at the detail, it would have been familiar to you because it came out of consultation between the government and private sector interests. These tax reforms go to the heart of any investment decision, the relationship between risk and return. In the case of infrastructure, the current tax treatment of early stage losses lowers the incentive to undertake higher risk long-term investments. We heard that message clearly from industry. Under the government's new changes, a project assessed as nationally significant by Infrastructure Australia may be eligible to have the value of its early stage losses uplifted over time and exempted from tax rules which prevent losses being used where there's a change of ownership. Overall, the result will be a lower weighted average cost of capital for eligible projects, lower compliance costs and greater certainty, particularly in terms of brownfield investors. How do we uh, attract more super funds into the infrastructure sector here in Australia, not just overseas? Our aim is to make productive projects for the nation even better investments for the private sector and to encourage the sector to plan around worthwhile infrastructure projects in Australia into the future. This is part of a broad program to tackle prolonged underinvestment in Australia's infrastructure and to drive a long-term agenda through Infrastructure Australia. Since it was established uh, just three years ago, IA has run the first ever national audit of infrastructure, established a national list of projects in terms of priorities and developed productivity strategies for our ports and our freight network. I'm very pleased that I recently uh, appointed uh, a new board and reappointed uh, Sir Rod Eddington as uh, the chair and uh, Mark Birrell, uh, your uh, chair, to once again be, take up the place on the Infrastructure Australia Council. It has been a very effective group. Uh, can I say I've been uh, able to uh, brief them and uh, be engaged with them in a way in which uh, I wish I could say this about all the organisations when I sit around in a room, that is, they don't leak. And uh, that is certainly the case. They've actually taken their responsibilities to the nation uh, very seriously indeed, each and every one of them. And I think we have an outstanding uh, group of men and women and we improved the balance, it must be said, of uh, the gender balance on the IA Council with uh, the new appointments. So I think the IA reforms have been, uh, have been welcomed. The fact that you had a, a speaker from Infrastructure UK uh, here earlier today, modelled essentially, uh, I, I can say, I think, uh, 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 modestly, not on behalf of myself, but the nation, uh, modelled a, a lot of the, uh, the infrastructure organisations globally have been modelled on Infrastructure Australia very explicitly. And the feedback I've had internationally is uh, that what we've done here in Australia has been, uh, uh, been copied or modelled, uh, whether it be in terms of uh, the UK, New Zealand, uh, our counterparts as well have come and examined what we're doing from Japan, uh, from China, from Europe. Indeed, uh, state governments here in New South Wales as well has uh, taken uh, the, uh, the Infrastructure Australia model with some variations in the creation of Infrastructure New South Wales.